I'm Saturday hauling for you guys today, and if you hear some banging and stuff like that, it's the wind outside. It is super windy and super rainy, and it's trying to act like it wants to snow, and I'm like, not yet. <laughs> to start off with, I've got these bath salts from the brand Lord Jones. I purchased these off of the Beautylish website. They sell Lord Jones products. I hauled their royal oil a couple of weeks ago, and I've been using that pretty consistently about every night, and it's got a really high concentration of CBD and one other oil, and I want to say it's grapeseed or jojoba and I can't remember off the top but anyway I've been getting along with that oil really well I love it that it's very little ingredients and I'm, I really like the idea of the direction that CBD is going I have got a lot of pain issues from an injury in my shoulder and this that and the other and things that I do outside with horses and whatnot so I thought I would give this a try and so last night was the perfect opportunity for me to try this because I was hauling square rails yesterday and if anybody's hauled square bales, let me know. Square bales are actually blocks of hay that you haul, and we like to put ours in the barn so that we have um, easy access to hay in the wintertime, or if we want to take a bale traveling or something, we put up square bales. Anyway, that's a chore. <laughs> so I was hauling square bales yesterday, and I knew that I was going to be sore today. So I thought this is a great time to try out these bath salts, and I took a bath with them yesterday, and I am very surprised that... I'm not nearly as sore as I thought I was going to be. I thought I was going to be like a hurting, hurting unit today, and I'm just a little bit of a hurting unit, not not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I don't know for sure, but I kind of feel like these had something to do with it, in addition to the fact that they smell, they smell really good in the bath as well. The one thing I will mention, there are little bits in here that don't dissolve. They're, I don't know if they're lemon or if they're that arnica, because there's arnica in here as well, which is a natural... Um, pain reliever but I have a jet tub and so I was a little worried about those kind of going in the jet system and so I tried to fish them out <laughs> and then the uh, little drain thing that sucks in the water for the jets kind of caught a whole bunch of them so that's good but I do want to make mention of that if you do have a jet tub because those pieces in here don't dissolve but other than that I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this because like I said I do have a lot of pain issues and I, I can't believe how not sore I am today from hauling all those bales. <laughs> so let me show you what the glass jar looks like. It's a 12 ounce uh, glass jar that the salts come in right there and then there's a, a large scoop inside of there that says one heaping scoop is what you use mm, and they do smell really good. So those are the high CBD formula bath salts from Lord Jones. And then during the Sephora sale, I also purchased this stacked skincare. Um, it's the number three treat part of kind of their regimen. I kind of usually don't go by that. I was just looking at the ingredients and reading the reviews and stuff and I wanted to try this. Um, a lot of the reviews uh, had said that it helped with acne and stuff like that. And I'm constantly trying to keep my face blemish free because I do have very blemish prone skin. Um, so I thought I'd give this a try. So it's the EGF Activating Serum and it's from Stacked uh, Skin Care. So it comes in a one ounce bottle with a dropper. And then on the back here, it says, feel the heal with epidermal growth factor skin care created especially for skin with acne, dark spots, and other signs of stunted cell turnover. EGF Activating Serum contains growth factors that speed healing and brighten skin. So I've been using this morning and night for the past like probably four or five days and I haven't had any no weird reactions or anything like that to it. Um, I feel like my skin looks pretty nice but I think it's a little bit too you know short of a time period to, to tell. But the reviews on Sephora for this were really glowing. The ones that weren't giving it the best rating was because of the smell. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This doesn't smell very good. Granted, there is, I believe it's um, yeast extract is the one, two, th the third ingredient. And I'm sure that's the reason why it smells. But I'm glad that there isn't any added fragrance in here. Um, I'd rather just, I guess, deal with the smell if it's going to do wonderful things for my skin. But that is worth mentioning that this doesn't, it's not pleasant. Like the pharmacy vitamin C serum, it smells like cherries. This does not smell like cherries. <laughs> But so far, so good with it. So again, that's from Stacked Skin Care. It's their EGF Activating Serum. A couple repurchases. This is my third uh, little tube of the First Aid Beauty uh, Retinol Eye Cream right here. I'm just to the tail end of a second bottle of this. This is one of the only retinol products I've found that the skin around my eyes can tolerate. It's not hydrating enough for my liking, so I layer it. I put this down first, kind of like a treatment, and then I layer a heavy eye cream over the top of it. But I really like this because, again, it's got retinol in it, and it's one of the only retinols I've been able to use 
all the way around my eyes without like frying the skin off. <laughs> so I really like uh, this product here from First Aid Beauty and this is my third bottle. And then I haven't used this yet because they just came yesterday but I'm really excited about it and I wanted to bring it up because these are limited edition. Um, I purchased four of these new pharmacy very cherry clean makeup melt away cleansing balms and i have taken one out and smelled it because i want to use up the tail end of the uh, green clean one that i'm using right now before i dive into this but this smells just like the vitamin c serum with that uh, cherry scent which is just lovely but the thing about this is it's this is just an amazing cleansing balm like when i travel i can bring this for um, a makeup remover at night and then also i love to use this product as my final cleanse because i feel like it just really gets in the pores and cleans them out really well and it rinses off so clean. I love this. I've gone through so many of the green cleans I just can't even count. So I think it's really fun that they came out with a, a cherry version to kind of spice it up a bit. I'm just super excited about it and it's limited edition and I just think they should probably make it permanent. <laughs> now onto some makeup. I was in Ulta yesterday and they had the new Urban Decay the ultimate brush off set and go translucent loose setting powder. This is the box packaging. I got the fair shade and there's 0.71 ounces of product in here, which is a pretty decent amount. Now the packaging comes like this here and you can take the, you, you twist and pull up and there's a brush in the end. The brush is a super soft synthetic and then there, there's little holes where the powder will sit. Um, there isn't a closure for the holes once you pull the sticker off. I didn't pull mine off yet um, because I typically like a fluffier, brush to put setting powder on for kind of a lighter application where this is quite dense. So I just left um, the sticker on mine. So I just twist it off the top and then the powder is inside of that container and that's how I used it today. I think it looks pretty set all over the face as well, but I'm really happy with the way that it looks underneath my eyes. Like my concealer hasn't migrated into those little eye rolls or anything like that and it doesn't feel super drying either. It hasn't deepened up in color. So, so far so good on this guy. There is a translucent shade and I think two other shades, maybe a fair, medium, and deep. Maybe there's five. There's four or five like shades. So that's the ultimate brush off set and go translucent loose setting powder from Urban Decay in the shade fair. So it's called a translucent loose setting powder, but it's got a shade and then there's a the shade translucent. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> And then I went out on a limb and I purchased a new foundation, which is very rare for me to do because I find a foundation that works with my skin that has nice SPF and all that type of stuff. And I don't stray too often just because I have a really sensitive reactive skin type. But I was just reading about the new Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. And it had some like, I think it had some good ingredients for the skin as well. And I thought I'm going to give this a try because I've been seeing it kind of all over and the bottle's so pretty and I was just really inquisitive. Um, I ordered the shade 8 Cool, um, thinking that it would kind of match the cool shades that I have in the Bare Pro because I'm quite a ways down in number in the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. Um, and I heard that quite a few of these shades run pretty light. So I got that shade and this is so orange. <laughs> I'm like, uh, this is so far from cool, I don't even know what the heck, man. So let me swatch it on the back of my hand for you guys. The bottle is absolutely stunning. It's got a glass, uh, frosted glass on there. Nice, weighted, beautiful bottle. But this here, that's not cool, man. <laughs> it's not cool and it's not cool you know what I mean so I'm gonna have to try to to figure out if I want to you know give this foundation a try um what shade would work best for me let me compare it next to the shade fawn from bare minerals bare pro so you can see the difference where this this bare pro one that's for sure a cool undertone So like that's the difference in shades and I'm just like that is so not cool again not cool <laughs> I still really want to try that foundation so if you have a suggestion for me in terms of the shades that would be super great because I'm like a long way away from a Charlotte Tilbury counter <laughs> and I purchased that on the Charlotte Tilbury website with the bundle where you could get the new corrector as well and I picked of course the shade one fair in the corrector shade um, this product here it comes with a little flip top and a little mirror in there the consistency of this is so nice it's thin it covers it blends out really really beautifully um, this is a little bit darker than what I was hoping for especially in the terms calling it fair so when I 
go to put it underneath my eyes, you can really see the difference between my actual skin color and this product because there's that much of a variation. Um, so I've been setting this with my, kind of my lightest setting powders because I love the consistency of this so much. It is a beautiful product. It covers darkness really well. Um, I've set it yesterday with the Fenty Beauty Lavender Powder because that's super brightening and that combination seemed to work really well. I wish so bad they would come out with one more shade just a little bit lighter. <laughs> Again, the consistency of this is beautiful. It's thin, it covers, it blends out nice. It's just, the formula of this is just stunning. When I set it, I didn't have any creasing with it. Um, just really, really nice. It'll be a good one too. If I would do want to brighten it up, I can mix it with some of my lighter concealers. Um, but I like this product, the way that it looks on the skin all by itself underneath the eyes is really pretty. Just, I just wish there was, a, again, a little bit lighter shade for me. So that is the Magic Vanish Under Eye and Face Cheat for Intense Color Correction um, from Charlotte Tilbury. This is, this is a nice product. And then again from my Sephora order, I got the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Concealer. And the shade I got is 101 Fair and it has got 0.19 fluid ounces of product. The Charlotte Tilbury's got 0.08 I think. Yeah, 0.08 ounces of product in that guy. This is what the box on this one looks like, and here is the packaging. It comes in a pretty compact little uh, tube with a interesting shaped doe foot applicator. Let me swatch this. Let's swatch it right underneath the Charlotte Tilbury. I think online they describe this as a neutral undertone, and it does, in my opinion, it doesn't lean yellow or uh, like kind of pink or anything so I do feel like it is a neutral and I thought this was going to be a little bit more of a lightweight concealer and it's a little more heavy it does cover but the consistency of it is is more heavy than a lot of the concealers that are out like nowadays that I've been really enjoying they're so thin but they cover this one's a little bit heavier it still covers really well um but it's heavier and slightly it slightly feels dry underneath my eyes and I have dry eyes the way that it is. So I'm not as crazy about that concealer as I thought I was going to be. I like that coverage, but I don't like that heavy kind of feel or that it kind of looked like I was wearing concealer. And then that dry feeling that it gave my under eyes. But that's the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Concealer. Again, this is the shade 101 Fair. And then I also purchased the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer. They came out with a new lighter shade. This is the shade 0.5N. So this is one up from the shade 1C, I believe, which I do have 1C and I love to mix that concealer with other concealers that need a little bit more of a pink tone to them. Um, it's just a little bit too dark for me to wear on its own, so I typically like to use that to mix because the formula is also really beautiful. So I was really excited that they came out with this lighter shade because uh, tomorrow I'm going to mix the two together, the 1C and this half shade, and I think it's going to be my perfect under eye concealer. But for today, I put this concealer on underneath my eyes just to see what it would look like by itself. And I really love the formulation of this concealer. I feel like it covers, it's thin, it feels nice underneath the eyes. So this paired with 1C I think is going to make just a wonderful match. Um, let's swatch it right here. So that's the shade 0.5, and I've got that underneath my eyes today. Then when I was in Sephora yesterday, I have a Sephora inside JCPenney's where I'm at. Um, they had these Marc Jacobs Air Blush Soft Glow Duos on sale. And then I had gotten an email that was good only in store for 20% off. So I got this blush for like 16 bucks, And normally they're $42. So I kind of got it for a steal. And I've got three of these Marc Jacobs blushes in my collection already because I really like them. Um, this is the shade 508 Night Fever and Hot Stuff. And it's kind of one of those burnt type of blushes that this would be a good one for the summertime. I don't know why I didn't buy it sooner, to be honest. Because it's that, it's that burnt blush shade that I really like. And these blushes, these air blushes from Marc Jacobs, again, are really beautiful products. So if you ever wanted to try these, maybe check inside your Sephora's in their sales section because, again, these were on mega sale. When I ordered that duo from Charlotte Tilbury, I also ordered their new uh, luxury palette. It's the Quad color-coded eyeshadows in Walk of Shame, which is a new one, but very similar to several others that she has in her collection. But because I am who I am, I have to keep my collection of quads 
complete and I have all of them so <laughs> not only that but her shadows are very sophisticated and easy to wear and work with as well so I do like them for that reason so this is the new walk of shame palette everything in here is a shimmer this one is a pressed glitter shimmer and then these ones are all like shimmer shades I did wear this the other day all shimmer all over all day and it was awesome <laughs> I really like the way that it looked on the eyes so let's give you some swatches of this guy On those glitter shades, if I'm using a brush, I do have to really wiggle my brush in there to pick up that product. And I know that I see her like in her little videos and stuff, she uses her finger a lot. I don't feel like my finger picks up much product. <laughs> I don't know if it's just my finger or what, but so I, I actually get more product when I use, use that with a brush, but I do gotta work it in there to get it. So that is the Charlotte Tilbury Walk of Shame eyeshadow quad right there. I also finally purchased her Pillow Talk Diamonds Glossy Starlet Sparkling Lip Look in Pillow Talk Diamonds. I just keep looking at this and then she was putting on her models on like the Instagram deals and stuff and it just, I finally got it. And I'm glad I did because it's really pretty on the lips. But if you don't like the feeling of like a chunky glitter on your lips or the fact that glitter will kind of remain on your lips throughout the entire day, you probably will not like this. I personally don't mind it because I just like glitter and shine, but um, I know a lot of people don't kind of like that feeling or that left behind glitter that is on the lips and this does do that. Um, other than that, the formulation is quite balmy and very glossy, but you can definitely feel the glitter particles in there. So it kind of looks pinky, but it has a super strong golden shift to it which the slightest bit of pink a lot of gold sparkle and it feels quite balmy and I had worn this with I think I had iconic nude on that day her lip cheat but I'm sure it's gonna look beautiful with pillow talk as well so that is the uh, pillow talk diamonds from Charlotte Tilbury um, right there and then I've been on a major eyelash kick. I get on these kicks of things. I'm on a concealer and eyelash and palette. Never mind, I'm just on a, a kick altogether. We'll just go with that. <laughs> um, these were on sale at Ulta, so I ordered two pairs of them. They're the Velour Luxe Faux Mink Lashes, and these are in the style Flawless. So I got two of them, and these are the lashes that I have on today. They're very wispy at the ends. They just kind of flare out, which I really like. I do have to cut off, I would say, a fourth of the end on there for, to fit my eye shape, but I really like these eyelashes. Again, these are the Luxe Faux Mink Lashes from Velour in the style Flawless. And then the other ones I've been loving are the Lily Lashes Faux Mink in the style Paris. So I got two pairs of these that they had in Sephora yesterday with the 20% off. Um, this is kind of one of the pairs that I've been wearing. I've worn these three times so far and they've been holding up pretty well. So I do again trim off some of the end, but again they're a flared out kind of an eyelash, which is my favorite. I pulled one out of the plastic there. This is the full lash of Paris. And then I went out on a limb and I thought I would try the shade Randy as well. These ones look just a little bit bigger and a little bit more full than the Paris ones. So I'm going to give those guys a go. But I really like these Lily Lashes, the faux mink ones. The other week I also bought this style and this is the NYC ones. I cut these off on the corners as well, but these are nice too. And then Ulta was doing buy one get one 50% off on Real Techniques. So I ordered um, the new Brush Crush life force brushes they come in this style packaging and then yesterday when i was in ulta i did see a display for these brushes but i had already ordered them and real techniques brushes i feel like are some of the most uh, affordable quality functional synthetics on the market like i have got real techniques brushes that have been beat to a pulp and they are still going strong. They're just really tough brushes in addition to being really functional. Um, they are soft synthetics. They're not the softest synthetics on the market, but um, the bristles on Real Techniques brushes are textured, so they pick up product a lot easier than some of those synthetics that are like so, so soft that you try to put them in a powder and they just don't grab product. That's what I one of the things that I really love about Real Techniques brushes. So these are the newest of the Brush Crush line. I'm trying to get the holographic handles in there uh, for you guys and then check out the ferrule on the powder brush this is the 003 it's in a diamond 
So this one is the 003, and this is what I used to uh, set my face with that Urban Decay powder today, and it worked really well. It's just a nice powder brush, and then they've got the 001, I think they're called this one the foundation brush, and they've got 002, which is probably a kind of a highlight maybe brush, use it for all kinds of things, blush, whatever, and then this one is the 004 brush, and I put my blush on today with this guy. I just really like these. I was so excited to be able to get them, buy one, get one too. And then the highlighter that I have on my face today is one of the new ones from Ofra. This is the Highlighter Retrograde, and I got this on Ulta Online as well. And it looks to me, and I don't know for sure, but this looks like Star Island, and then their new purple highlighter, which... Ofra was having a sale over Labor Day. I want to say it was 30, 35% off, and I did order the purple highlighter. And the other new one, they did a collab with another gal, and it looks light enough for me, so I ordered that one. But I love Ofra highlighters. I think that they're stunning. This is the highlighter that I have on the top of my cheeks today. They're just very, very high shine and pretty on the skin. If you like more subtle highlighters, this guy is definitely not for you. But I, like I said... I like to be seen from space, you know? <laughs> and then there. So you can see the tones. There it is mixed, and then there they are separate. And I like that they're, they're separated enough where if you wanted to concentrate your brush on either side, you can do that because there's a pretty good size half of each. So that is Ofra's Highlighter Retrograde right there and I have that on today and then I found a full display of the new L'Oreal plump and shine lipsticks I have two other shades um, that I found at random and they have like the display and there's little slots for two shades at a time so there's actually not that many shades in the range maybe they're planning on expanding soon I don't know but I got two more shades 104 guava plump and these give your lips a slight tingling sensation, not overbearing or anything like that. But they put such a high glossy shine on the lips. And they're one of those uh, lip products that you can just throw on and don't have to kind of worry about. Well, at least the shades I got. <laughs> I think there are some deeper shades in the range, but I kind of got the more wearable shades. So that's a 104 Guava Plump. And then this one, which is the one I had wanted the whole time. I finally found it. <laughs> it's 107 Coconut Plump, and this is the nude shade right here. So this one is Coconut Plump. Looks great with Charlotte Tilbury's Iconic Nude. Just super high shine, glossy lipsticks right there from L'Oreal. And then also in Ulta yesterday, I got one of the new NARS High Pigment Longwear Eyeliners. These ones do not twist up like the other ones do. Um, I got the shade Night Porter, which has got a, a green reflex type of shine in it. I swatched all the shades, and I, I want to say that the rest of them appeared to be matte. I almost got the blue shade, but I really like that green in this one. It's not super, super green. It's like in a dark kind of black base. This is the eyeliner that I have on my waterline today, and I've had it on for roughly five hours and there's just ever so slight wear on this outer corner down here and I, I so far I don't have any that's transferred to the inner corner so this is kind of posing promising and if it continues to wear like this throughout the day I really hope they come out with some more shades because all the shades were pretty dark and I like a bright I do like bright colors on the waterline every once in a while I like a dark shade but this is the shade night porter right here and you can't see it too much right there, but if I kind of go like that, you can see more of the green shift in there. And on my waterline, I think that it looks it looks black. So, so far so good on this guy. It's really looking promising. Again, that's the High Pigment Longwear Eyeliner from NARS. And again, I have got the shade, uh, what did I say? Night Porter. And then also during this for sale, I got this Too Faced Shake Your Palm Palms palette. It's just a mini eyeshadow palette that smells, smells like coconut, coconut pineapple or something. <laughs> the packaging is one of their tins and then inside you've got six eyeshadows that are 0 0.02 ounces and then two larger ones that are 0 0.03 ounces. Um, the shades in here are nothing revolutionary or new to Too Faced. But it's a cute little palette and the look all comes together when I use just these shades in this palette. But we've all seen these shades before. I'm going to swatch them anyway. <laughs> uh, this is matte. This one's matte and that one is matte. So when I used uh, a brow bone highlight, I used the shimmery shade in there. So let's give you some swatches. Some of the shades are a little stiff in the pan. 
Um, so I had to wiggle my brush in there, but the mats and stuff blended out pretty nice. They feel quite substantial and pigmented. So there's the top four. And then here are the bottom four. You guys hear that wind? It's just out of hand, man. So there are the swatches for the Too Faced Shake Your Palm Palms <laughs> eyeshadow palette. They do have names. They're listed on the back of the palette there. And then the brand Kaleido sent me over their two new eyeshadow palettes. They've got the Futurism 4 and Futurism 5. Um, there are three predecessors to this, the Futurism 1, 2, and 3, which I hauled a few videos ago. But their packaging is just super pretty. It's, it's kind of a unique type of brand, and their shadows are are stunning. I've actually got two shades from the Futurism 5 palette on my lid today. That is that super pretty sparkly shine that you see. Like, I would love a great big palette full of both mattes and shimmer shades from this brand because their shadows are so nice. And if there was anything that I could change about it, it's nothing to do with the actual product. It's just kind of a um, package deal is I would just ditch these guys right here, the little um, plastic inside with the names on them. And I'd love them to be printed inside because I this is just kind of in the way for me. These always are. But other than that, everything about these is just lovely. This has got kind of that faux matte feel to it. And there's a mirror in there as well. So this one has got two of those super saturated shimmer shades and then four very in-your-face mattes, which let's swatch those first. They're just, they're so finely milled, but still substantial and extremely pigmented. This brand just really gets me excited, this Kaleidos brand, because they're just so pretty. So those are the mattes right there. And then these two are the shimmers. Wait till you see how pretty these are, you guys. Look at those. They're so, so pretty. They've got that wet look, but they're still pigmented enough to hold color and this super high sparkle to them that's just stunning. So that one is the Futurism 4 palette from Kaleidos. And then this one is the Futurism 5 right here. This one has got more of a kind of a metallic shiny packaging. Here's the little inlay there. And then here are these shadows. I have got the two shiny ones on my eyes today. Again, that, that's that pretty shimmer. And then these guys are matte and these two are matte. So let's give you some swatches. This blue is, oh gosh. Like, I'm tempted, <laughs> I'm tempted to put this white one on my cheeks, but. So a big thank you to Kaleidos for sending these over. You guys make some stunning eyeshadows. And that is everything for the haul today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I'll see you guys later. Bye.